Today's day 18, and my job for today is food collection. Uh, Monica let me get a really good night's sleep last night. She stayed up most of the night. I don't know how she did it because she was tired too. She's crashing back at the campsite right now, and I'm out to try to get us some food. Now, we still have the big bucket full of food, but even as much as is in there, I mean, that's maybe just a couple of weeks, really. So we really need to stretch that and be supplementing that with other things right now. So that's what I'm out looking for, as well as any other useful things that I can find while I'm out here. I'm going to be looking for wild plants, and even though I've been a vegetarian for the past 10 or 15 years, I'm looking for animals, because I'm going to starve to death if I don't take advantage of every single food source that I can, that I can find today. But I don't have any experience hunting. I've never been hunting before. Not surprising, because, you know, <laughs> I'm a vegetarian. But, uh, at this point, I wish I had a little more experience with that, but, you know, I'm in this situation, so I'm going to do the best that I can. I do know how to make, uh, make some basic traps. I know how to make figure four traps, so I'm going to be doing those today. A friend of mine showed me that several years ago, and I remember how to make figure four traps. It's kind of a de deadfall trap. I'm going to set a bunch of those first, and then I'm just going to be doing some hiking and stalking of animals. Uh, and my weapon is this. It's just a club. It's a reasonably weighty piece of wood that if I see something, I'm just going to throw this at it, and if I hit it, it'll stun the animal, I'll rush over to it, I've got a knife here to finish it off, or I can, uh, you know, club it again, or stomp on it with my foot, or something. Clearly, I've thought this through, and I have lots of experience with it. Uh, but anyway, that's going to be my initial approach, is, uh, is trying that. Now, I'm not anticipating that I'm going to be throwing this at a deer or a bear, and then, you know, finishing them off with this little thing. I generally, when I, I take hikes, I don't see large animals like that in the woods. Uh, what I see is small animals, squirrels, birds, uh, chipmunks, things of that nature. So that's what I'm imagining that I'm going to be clubbing today. Am I happy about it? No, not at all. It's definitely not going to be gay clubbing that I'm doing. I'm, I mean, gay is like happy, you know. Uh, it's rather remorseful clubbing that I'm doing today, but uh, yeah, it's necessary because we're going to starve to death if we don't get as much food as possible. I'm going to make the traps first because before I go out hunting, I want to be setting all these traps so they can be working all day while I'm off, you know, stocking things. So I've got uh, the supplies that I need for making a simple figure four trap. And that is a nice, straight, kind of thin uh, piece of tree branch here. Uh, something that's kind of strong, that's not going to break. You know, you don't want anything that's, that's kind of rotted. And I'm going to start by taking and clearing off all the, uh, all the branches on this thing. Yeah, you can see why I really wanted to have this thing for being out camping. It's just very useful. You can do this with a knife, but not nearly as easily, not nearly as quickly. Actually, actually, as far as I'm going to go, I'll snap the rest of this off. Okay, get rid of that. Okay, so now we've got this nice straight piece of, st well, reasonably straight. It's a little bit w wiggly, but I think we'll be able to make do with it. Uh, and what I need to do is I need to uh, cut off four pieces, and the pieces I'm going to be making are maybe a little bit longer than the span between my pinky and thumb if I do this. So I'm going to start down here at the bottom. And first I'm going to trim off the edge, uh, the end of this one, to make it nice and straight. I broke my cutting board. <laughs> that was not the best cutting board, anyway. I'll just keep using it into the ground, I guess. It becomes firewood next. Okay, there we go. Alright, so I'm going to take a, a space on this guy. we we'll probably cut it over here. Here's my span, and I'll go a little bit beyond that. Yeah, I'm really massacring this cutting board. I, I did need to find something a little bit better. This one, the cutting board I found was a little bit uh, rotted, actually. All right, so one, and I'll just use this one to make the next piece here. As you get thinner, it's going to cut a little bit more easily. There we go. And then measure off the next piece. Now these are a little wiggly, so this will be going to be a little, a little challenging to get these guys to work. And what the setup is, is you uh, want to create for this figure four trap, there's going to be one, one piece that's going to be your stake that sticks into the ground. Across that piece, there's going to be a bait stick that'll run like that. And then on top, there is going to be a, uh, another piece like this. And the idea is that 
when something grabs the bait here, it, it moves this stick, flips it off, and that releases this stick here to drop a, a rock or something heavy onto them. So what you have to do is a series of notches um, in all these sticks in order to get them to kind of interlock in this way. So that's what I'm going to do right now. It took a little while because these sticks were kind of wriggly and, and twisty and everything, but I finally got them uh, banged into shape, cut into shape, uh, and here's how they, they go together. This is the basic uh, vertical one that sticks into the ground. It has a notch on this side and kind of a fulcrum spot on the top there. Uh, and then there's the bait stick, which has a notch here that tapers on one side. This locks right into, oh, I put that upside down. <laughs> <laughs> this locks into this one like that. And you'll notice the bait stick has a pointy end on one end and then this little notch on this side. And the idea is that when something grabs stuff here, it'll slide these apart, they'll slip, and this little notch here is what releases the, uh, uh, the, the, the rock which is being held over it. And that works in this way. Got a little notch on here so it can balance uh, or rotate over the fulcrum. And you can see I'm just gonna hold it just like that so it's staked into the ground. And up here can take quite a bit of weight pushing down and it holds the whole thing together. I'm using my, my knee, is gonna be the squirrel. So something comes around here and it's kind of messing with the, the bait here. It pulls it out and the rock falls down. And crushes it. So that's the way that that thing works. So I'm going to make a few more of these and then I'm going to put them out in the landscape. I've already identified a few places where I can see clearly there's animals coming in and out of a burrow. So I'm going to be putting these right outside of that. Uh, and as for bait, I've noticed a lot of pine cones being eaten in the area. So I'm going to be putting some pine cones onto the bait sticks, uh, tying them on with grasses or, uh, you know, some kind of, you know, whatever I can get leaves or whatever to tie them on there. And also I've seen a lot of mushrooms out. Now some mushrooms don't seem to be of any interest to animals, but some of them have a lot of nibbles on them. So I've collected ones that seem like they're the ones that are being nibbled and, uh, uh, I'll, I'll try to use those as bait as well. In addition to that, on some of the traps I had the idea, uh, I wanted something aromatic that would sort of draw animals in, and I don't want to be sharing any of our food with them, but I do have some lip balm, so I was thinking on a couple of these traps I might put some lip balm, it has like a minty smell to it, uh, and see if that might attract animals in, just out of curiosity. I'll put it on the traps, not on the, on the food items that are going to be attached to it. Um, you know, I've read stories about how people's dogs have eaten, you know, chapstick and things like that. So maybe there's something that is interesting to animals about that. But I'm not going to put it on all of them because maybe it repels the animals. So I'm going to I'm going to try that out and see if that's effective. If it, if it is effective, then I will plan on, you know, maybe putting that on a lot of them. So anyway, I want to get those traps out so they can be set and waiting, and maybe I can catch some things. And in the meantime, once I get those set, I'm going to go around and do some hunting and stalking. And there's a lot of birds here. Hopefully I can get something that way. There's a really clear uh, animal hole right here going down underneath the tree. You can see that the leaves have been disturbed recently. And I've noticed in the area there's a lot of uh, pine cone uh, you know, debris that you know, something living in here has been eating pine cones. So I'm going to try to set up a trap right here. I've got my stake piece. I'm going to put the stake right there. Well, I should kind of space this out. I think I found this, this big rock. I'm going to use this as the, uh, you know, what's gonna fall, and that pivoted on this stone here. So I should kinda set this up and, uh, and see, oops, keep putting that upside down. I should set this up and kinda get a sense of how far away it needs to be in order to uh, have the rock. Okay, so right around here, I guess, seems pretty good. Okay, so we got that. Oop. Hair trigger. <laughs> you know, the problem here is the ground's a little bit wiggly. I'm having trouble getting a, a 
firm, uh, yeah, this is planted a lot more firmly into the ground now. Okay. So there we go. And put this guy up here. The only problem is it feels like it wants to twist. So I think I need this to be a little bit, man, I want to, it wants to be right where that root is, really. Unless I come from the other side. Maybe I come from the other side. Okay. Put this guy in here. Let's see, how would that work? It goes in there. Yeah, it's, the ground's still a little soft here. Let's see if it'll work. Okay, I guess that's one. I'm gonna take this pine cone and I'll gently attach it to this, uh, this stick here. And then if something comes out and it's interested, this gets put, maybe I should test it once. I guess it works. Okay, I'm gonna reset that and then uh, I'm gonna set a few more traps around the area. finding quite a few of these, little red efts. I kind of think that they are toxic though, or bad for you. I, I, all the, a lot of these brightly colored animals are, oftentimes have a really foul taste or something like that, so I know I don't know, so I'm not gonna mess with it. Plus they're so cute, they're so cute. of what I just did over the last couple of hours. I uh, was stalking animals, setting traps and everything like that, and I managed to get this poor little angel of a bird here. Uh, I ended up throwing a, a stick at it. It was disoriented from being hit by the stick. I stomped on it. I guess I broke its neck. There's not a lot of meat on here. I mean, even a robin or a blue jay would have been better than this. You know, not to, I mean, you died. I appreciate your sacrifice. But, uh, you know, I wish it was a little bit bigger, but I'm going to go over and prepare it by the fire, and then uh, I guess we'll, we'll cook it up in a soup or something like that. I feel bad about it, though. Normally I'm a vegetarian, but, uh, you know, in a crisis you have to adapt. <sighs> Poor little thing. Before we start working on this bird, what I wanted to do is go over uh, what I've set up as sort of my kitchen set here. Uh, what I think are kind of the most critical things you need if you're going to set up an outdoor kitchen. Uh, first, what I have right here in front of me is sort of a cutting board. This is a larger stick that I was able to kind of smooth off using the kurikuri by chipping off the top surface, and I've got kind of a flat surface right here. So that's going to be really important for preparing the bird. Also, I've got a stick for kind of, you know, poking around the fire, stirring anything. We'll be using this to sort of toast the bird in a little bit. Uh, I usually would get this stick from something that is, uh, you know, fresh and green. I don't want to be picking this up off the ground because you don't want it to be rotted or, you know, be covered in germs or anything like that. So you want, like, kind of a nice clean stick. And you can sanitize it just by sticking the end into the fire and, uh, and getting the end burned off a little bit. Uh, the other thing I have here is a mallet. And this is helpful for if you need to cut through something. You can take your, your knife, put it down, and then whack it. 
with the mallet, so you don't have to be like swinging a tiny little knife or anything like that. And uh, and last, I have this. I'm not going to be using this for the little bird, but if I had something larger, a uh, blade like this would be helpful for breaking through larger bones and things like that. So I've got that. And last but not least, actually not even last, is uh, some hand sanitizer from my bag for afterwards, because uh, after this is cooked, it'll be sanitary, but right now I don't know what kind of germs or whatever it has on there. So I've got this hand sanitizer to clean myself up after I've prepared it, uh, you know, before it's been cooked. Uh, the real last thing is this right here, and I'm so glad that I found it. This was, uh, it's just a tin can. Uh, while I was out hunting, I found an old camp, and this was in the fire. It's all, all kind of burned up and everything. I put some water in it, I'm gonna be using it. But when I saw that, I realized that I had not I had not packed a pot for myself uh, to be uh, to cooking any be cooking anything in, and that was a real problem. That was a huge mistake on my part. Okay, so we're going to start with this bird here, and the goal of what we're doing right now is to remove all the parts of the bird that we're not planning on eating, which includes the wings, the head, uh, you know, all the feathers, the legs, and uh, any of the guts that are on the inside. Now, I'm going to be really frank. I am not the world's expert on you know, gutting and preparing and butchering animals. You know, it, I'm sure that's not really that surprising since I'm a vegetarian. <laughs> Don't have an enormous amount of experience with this. I've done it a few times in the past, but I think it's also important for people to remember that even if you're not an expert in something, you can still give a crack at it, especially in a liver die kind of situation, you know. You know, some knowledge is better than no knowledge at all. So I'm gonna jump in here and see, uh, you know, see what we've got here. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the head off. And to do that, I'm going to take my fixed edge blade and put it down. And I'm going to use my club to drive it down through the neck. So I'm separating out the head here. Oh, it's such a tiny little neck. And I'm going to take this and there we go. Okay. And now with the head here, I'm not sure what to do with this. I guess, well, I'll pop it in the fire, I suppose, uh, because... Uh, you know, it could have germs and things like that and just sanitize all that. Next, what I'm going to do is get rid of the wings. So we'll get rid of the wings here. I don't think I need to drive the, uh, the stake through for or the, the mallet through for that. We'll get the wings and I'll throw that in the fire. And the other one. And we'll throw the other wing in the fire. Uh, next, what I'm going to do is pull off the tail, tail feathers, get all those off. So I'm going to use the knife to just cut through. I think I'm going to use the mallet for this to pop pop through that because we're going through the lower part of the spine. Oh, I missed. Okay, there we go. And I guess those go in there too. Uh, and now we're going to pull out the, the legs. Uh, well, not pull out the legs. I'm going to try to keep as much of the leg as has meat on it, but the lower part of the leg just doesn't have any meat at all. And I, I think I can just pop through those. Yeah, I can just pop through those with, the, with my, my knife. Okay. We got those, and now what's left uh, is just the uh, the bird's body with the guts on the inside, and we have to get all those guts out of there. That's very important. So uh, what I'll do is uh, I'm just going to start cutting with my fixed blade knife here, and uh, where we're going to start cutting is kind of like right where like your belly button would be if a bird had a belly button. Of course, they don't have belly buttons, but you can imagine that area. So I'm going to cut through right there, and okay, they're starting to squeeze out. See, this is the part that it'd be really great to have gloves. I, I mean, it'd be great to have gloves for all of it, but um, this in particular is extra gross. I'd love, love to have some gloves here, but you know, you work with what you got, and I do have the hand sanitizer for later. Okay. So we pull those out. Those, uh, I guess, those definitely go into the, the fire there. And uh, now uh, what we've got left is just uh, the body with the guts out, and I'm just gonna pull off as many many feathers as I possibly can and we'll we'll get the feathers into the fire. I'm trying to keep as much skin as I possibly can because the skin has fat and calories in it. Okay. Okay. So what we've got here is uh, just the breast muscles and there's not that much of it. It's just a tiny bit but it, there is food here and you know it's it, I'm not just going to throw it away because it's so little. I mean, it's, it's pretty much one bite of food, but that's one bite of food. So what I'm going to do next is use my stick here and put it through the middle of the, uh, the body here, kind of like up through the cavity, up through where the neck is, or, you know, the neck used to be. Now it's like, kind of like toasting a marshmallow. I'm going to put it over the fire, and 
I'm going to burn off all those feathers. This is actually this is actually cooking the meat as well. Instead of taking that sparrow body and boiling it and trying to separate out the meat and everything like that, I, I just ended up roasting it. I roasted it, I took the meat off of the bone that way. You know, did I get it absolutely everything? No, but I think it just would have been so onerous to have gone through the process of boiling it and then trying to separate that and everything like that. Uh, and you know, we're kind of hungry, so uh, instead I just roasted it and I put it in here uh, with some rice that we had in the bucket that we dropped, some salt that we had in the bucket that we dropped, and I looked around for wild edibles and I, I didn't find anything really that I recognized except for a jack in the pulpit. And I wasn't wasn't sure whether Jack in the Pulpit was inedible or not because I, I don't really have any experience with it. Uh, but fortunately, I brought this book with me. This is something I keep all the time in my EDC pack. Uh, and I was able to look it up and I was able to confirm that it's good that we didn't pick the Jack in the Pulpit and try to eat it because there is toxicity to it. I guess with Jack in the Pulpit, if you dry out the roots or something along those lines, you can, um, you know, you can, you know, eat them at that point once. They're dry, they lose the toxicity, I'm not sure. I'm gonna read more about it because there are some Jack of the Pulpit here and that's apparently a food source if we treat it in a certain way. But at least right now, I wasn't able to throw it in. So I'm glad I was able to confirm that before we poisoned ourselves. So anyway, all that's in here. It's not much, but it's something. And I'm gonna take it, place it right in the fire and let it boil for a while. And once the rice is all uh, you know puffed up and it's been boiling and sanitized and it's all safe to eat, It'll at least be something, you know. Do I wish we had more? Absolutely. Uh, I guess I'll be going around checking out my traps and see if I caught anything that way. But I'm glad we have something. Although in the long run, we're gonna need to get more than just sparrows. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.